All right, we are rocking and rolling. Well, what a nice crowd. Hi. Uh, you are in uh, advanced pizza making. If you happen to show up and you're in the wrong spot, I apologize. Uh, so yeah, Drupal 8, security tips and tricks. Fun topic. Uh, very happy to be here. This is uh, Florida Drupal Camp 2017. My name is Adam Bergstein. I go by Nerdstein, among other things. Uh, my wife has many different names for me, most of which are not very flattering. I'm just joking. Um, I'm the Associate Director of Engineering at Civic Actions. I have a Master's of uh, Science in Information Systems and Security from Penn State University. And I'm the Drupal 8 maintainer of a bunch of different modules, some of which uh, taxonomy menu, password policy, key encrypt, field encrypt, file encrypt. Uh, I do many community presentations, many community efforts. I did Google Summer of Code this year. I had two projects. I have many mentors, <laughs> or mentees, I should say. Uh, and so I try to be pretty well diverse in the community. Florida Drupal Camp, folks. Awesome event. This is solid. You guys, fantastic job, for real. All right, brief reminder. Uh, tomorrow, with Kathy, I am running, helping to run the code sprints on the Drupal 8 major issue queue. So uh, we are there to help. I do not want to be bored. Please come and participate. It'll be a fun time, I promise. Uh, it'll be great. And alligators, like for real? Um, <laughs> awesome. And, and I think the, the biggest alligator I've seen also is attending. What a character. Um, all right. So um, let's do a little introduction here, kind of set the stage and get, get acclimated with what we're going to talk about. Um, first and foremost, it may be hard to believe, I feel like we've been talking about it for like three or four years now, but Drupal 8 is only a year and a half old. It's only been released for a year and a half. Can you believe it? I mean, we've been talking about it now for what, upwards of two, three years, there have been presentations, it's been in development, everything like that. But imagine with the amount of progress that's been made, right, today, Imagine what it's going to be moving forward. It's only a year and a half old. I, I mean, Drupal 7 didn't even come around until about the second or third year, really. Really took off, right? So, but we're, we're there. All right, the next point. Security is super hard. It's just hard. It is the way it is, all right? So you got to deal with it. It changes all the time. New attacks come up all the time. And the solutions to prevent the attacks are changing all the time, too. Right? It's a constantly evolving landscape. And folks, this is really hard, too. You have to secure everything. You can't just secure your Drupal instance. You have to secure your users. You've got to secure your infrastructure. Everything. Right? So the problem space is not only broad, it changes all the time, and it's very difficult to do it right. Ah. A joy, right? <laughs> so the first piece of advice that I am going to give you is to please, for the love of God, understand the problem that you are trying to solve. I am, I'm, that's my plea. Because people sometimes think that, oh, I'm going to just enable this module and my site's going to be secure. No. You heard it here. <laughs> uh, also... <laughs> I, I offer some solutions in this talk about how you can secure your site, but do not run off and just enable every module that I tell you. It's not going to work. Trust me. All right. So what is a brief overview? This topic, uh, this presentation, I should say, is actually meant to be more broad than deep. This is a sweep of things. It's not meant to be very uh, in-depth. So we have a lot of things to cover. We're going to take a look very briefly at Drupal Core. We're going to explore hardening techniques overall that you can use. How do you set up your site for auditing? Looking at authentication, encryption practices, DevOps, things related to your environment. And finally, I'll take questions. I may do so at the Genius Bar, depending on where we go. So let us take a look at Drupal Core. All right. 
Drupal 8 and its core has so many new features that impact security, either in a direct or an indirect way. And that we should be very happy about because it comes out of the box, right? So I like it. <laughs> Let's take a look at a few different things that basically help with security that are provided to us by Drupal Core right out of the gate. First and foremost, we have Twig. And we were talking about this earlier. What does Twig do? Well, first and foremost, it provides complete auto escaping of any variable that is passed between the backend Drupal system and the Twig system. So what you basically get completely out of the box is something that is inherently more secure or you have to override it to not be secure, right? Not the case in 7. The other beautiful thing is that there is no custom PHP inside of templates. Twig has its own engine and logic and other things that you can develop with it, but you do not write PHP. Well, that doesn't work real great. You've been hacked. I have. My computer's kind of bugging out a little bit here. Oh, come on. Hook a brother up. There we go. Push the red button. Push your button. Uno mas. All right. Thank you. Next, PHP in input filter. Oh, man, this was like the bane of my existence. I can't even tell you. All right, so this module was completely removed from core. You now can completely eliminate vulnerabilities by someone on your team who is entering PHP code into your Drupal system. Okay, horrible idea, terrible. Like, you know, that's remote execution running directly on a Drupal site. Who thought, oh man, okay. <laughs> trusted hosts. So a trusted host is great because that basically builds uh, information inside of the Drupal system so that it knows what it should be associating with. It ties a domain directly to your site. And you could say, well, why, why is that you know, useful? Well, you can basically put in gates and checks to make sure that if you're having communications with web services or other APIs, you have that context. So you can prevent any external spoofing of your site using a tool like that. Pretty nice. Now, this one's probably the most critical. So the new development constructs that came with Core in Drupal 8 are a huge deal. Plugin systems have basically now been uh, the replacement of some things that were hooks in Drupal 7, and modules can now support um, extended or customized behaviors through a plugin system. They could develop their own. Core also has different plugin systems to extend various parts of the system itself. But the great thing about this is that out of the box with Drupal, when you're doing development, you have an inherent concept or a way of developing um, a number of uh, ways to make your application very diverse uh, or address your custom <coughs> use cases. So the, the great thing about this is modules can now be developed that are more extensible and flexible and can address a lot of needs. You might say, well, that maybe not, you know, isn't directly related to security, but it is, right? Because one of the great things is you can extend many of the tools that I have built in the security space for your specific use case, so we'll get to that later. Composer, all right. Composer is incredible in Drupal 8 because we are now getting off of the Drupal island. We're, we have decided as a community that we are going to explore and allow other open source projects to participate in with what we do. So, why do I care about that in this talk? Well. We are going to be able to bring the best of breed open source tools in security into Drupal. I kind of like that idea. And if we're using it, I guarantee you we might, you know, because we're decent people, we've, we've done this before, we may have the ability to give back to their projects as well and make them better. Oh. So, thank you to Core 
We're very grateful for the wonderful tools that you have given us that are impacting security in some way, shape, or form. We're going to hand this over to the contrib space a little bit, and much of my presentation remaining is about contrib. Uh, but there is definitely more that's in core. I gave you a couple of highlights. Uh, definitely take a look and do some reading. Uh, there's another uh, talk that a friend of mine, Peter Willannon, he gave actually at Drupal North uh, a couple months ago that was on Drupal 8 security. So you can find that on YouTube, and it's also a good presentation. So let's talk about uh, some hardening techniques that will be used you know, in practice to try to get your site more secure. First and foremost, what is uh, hardening techniques? What, what's the definition of that? Well, it's a way to lock down any attack vector that your site is subjected to, all right? Uh, and like I said, it's really everything. It's your entire stack. It's not just your Drupal system. It could be your CDN. It could be everything, right? So the hardening techniques are trying to identify ways that you can limit the vulnerabilities or patch them or, or reduce the functionality so that they don't do as much. You want to try to like close things up and only have the features or functionality that you need. So the, when you hear people basically saying that they are trying to harden a system, more often than not, you are trying to find ways to secure the people who are using the system, right? And sadly, <laughs> uh, they also get really annoyed by that too. I'm just, I'm just saying from experience. Right? They, I, they want usability, it's a big thing, right? But you know, many of the security tools and practices actually make the system a little harder for them to use. But, Let's just start by acknowledging that if a Drupal user gets compromised, they can do some nasty stuff, right? They might just not just even be able to change some content in a not good way, but they might actually be able to go and drop in, you know, some content that brings in an external library or does something really crazy and malicious on your site. So don't be that guy. Get your, uh, get your users in the right place. So how could you do that? That's what we're going to explore. First we'll start with the auto logout module. And by the way, everything that I present here is readily available and good to go in Drupal 8 right now. Auto logout. So what is the problem that this module tries to solve? Well, user sessions should be limited to a very specific amount of time. I don't want them to be logged in forever. So what does it do? This module gives you a way to configure a timeout and it can run and force a user to re-authenticate if they've been you know, logged in too long. And it's also configured by role and that's one big thing about security is different roles have different privileges, right? So for your very super privileged people, you probably want to make sure they're getting logged out pretty regularly. And that'll do it. Session limit. Oh, yes. I was just wondering with the auto logout module, how, like, uh, are you using, like, a central authentication system? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it usually only applies to um, the Drupal authentication, but it will work in some single sign-on instances as long as it's using Drupal sessions. So that's the, the key. So if you are doing single sign-on, uh, you can probably make use of it, but um, yeah, it can always get a little tricky with, with third-party integrations. Uh, session limit. So um, suppose you only want to allow someone to have one active session at a time. This is how you would solve that. So you can configure it uh, also by role, which is cool. Uh, so maybe your administrators only ha can have one open at a time. So that's cool too. Login security. Uh, this one is not, uh, I don't use this all the time because with mobile devices and desktops and things, it's not really great. Uh, it, it's pretty limiting. Uh, users complain like crazy. Uh, but you can authenticate or restrict by IP addresses or a range of IP addresses uh, for this module. 
Um, and you could set a number of invalid uh, login attempts before an account is basically you know, disabled or you know, needs to be turned back on to allow users to log in. Um, and uh, this extends, uh, basically it's just an extension of um, some of the brute force technology that Core already provides. Uh, it does provide some similar stuff uh, already out of the box. Did you have a question? Does it handle the GUI behavior? Uh, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the, one, the one case that I feel like this module does really well is when you have uh, a network and you have a set of known IP addresses or ranges that you always have traffic from. That's really what this is for. But what's super annoying is if you have a lot of people on phones and doing things, their IP addresses are changing constantly. So it's really just doesn't, it's not, not wise to use that in all cases. Set kit, um, which is a security kit. I, I kind of look at this module as almost like a Swiss army knife. It kind of does a lot of different things across a broad spectrum of stuff. I think one of the primary things that this module does is really around um, headers uh, and, and proper header responses, basically to try to prevent things like cross-site scripting or request forgery, um, clickjacking, origin-driven attacks, but Drupal does have, uh, Incore has some origin functionality now, so that's been minimized. Uh, but this module basically provides almost like a series of checkboxes, like bing, 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 I want to do this. It's really easy to configure. This might be the only one that I, it, that I would say is super generic and useful. <laughs> I'm having some trouble with it, too. This, this screen went out on me once. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, honeypot and CAPTCHA. So what's the core problem here? Well, all right, if any Drupal site has a form that is open, say, for the public or anything like that, um, they can collect data, but so can robots. Robots can fill them out, right? It's crazy. Uh, and I can't even tell you how many times, you know, the floodgates open up and it's like once one robot finds it, they all find it. You know, it's like within a week you, you went from like, oh, I've got like seven or eight spam submissions. Oh my God, I have 50,000. This is insane. So if you want a way to restrict, I, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, Hmm. Well, I am recording this myself, so I'm going to just... Uh... I'm going to go get that. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it does look like it's not. I'm not sure if it's on. Yeah, Oh, you're fine, Mark. It's, it's... Okay, go find help. Press forward. Oh, now it's back on. Okay. No, you're good. You're fine. Okay. Well, it's okay. These things happen. I'm going to push the... All right. We're back on. Um, all right. The Honeypot and CAPTCHA. So, again, you can install these modules to basically provide a, a super naive way to restrict uh, form submissions. And Honeypot, like as an example, it puts like a fake form field on the form but it's hidden from user view, so no user will ever see it. So valid humans will actually not fill it out. But if someone trips the honeypot, like a robot, uh -uh. they can't submit it. All right. So let us move on <laughs> to auditing. All right. If you really want a hot job right now, I'm talking like, you know, you want to make huge dollars, you want to strike it rich in an area that is just up and coming, digital forensics is like probably the number one thing that I like see on job boards from massive companies and huge, you know, it's a huge, huge space right now. So if you ever get hacked, your objective should be to make sure you have as much information as possible at your fingertips to try to figure out what happened, right? And that does impact your Drupal site because you need to make sure that you have as many tools turned on and configured that your Drupal site is reporting on what it's doing, right? So that's why it's really important to consider uh, enhancing your Drupal system for auditing uh, based technology. So what are some general tips? Um, first, 
make use of syslog, do not use dblog. dblog fills up, it impacts your database, things blow up, your site goes down. Bad. Also do a quick pass. So every site, every Drupal instance is different, but you should try to understand what it is that you need to log from your site. So what are actions that users take? Do they fill out forms and perform content management? Do you want to track creating new pages or editing or deleting things? Do you want to track um, you know, people filling out forms and logging that? All of these things are possible, right? But you should look at your specific use case and try to understand exactly what it is that you need to maintain. Think of, think of the case when you get hacked, right? And I didn't say if, I said when. How about that? <laughs> so my general advice to all of you is to log as much data as you possibly can. Be as unassuming <laughs> as you can be to make sure that you don't regret not logging something. Log all the things. <laughs> all right, so how can you do it? Well, the site audit module basically provides you a nice handy dandy tool uh, to scan and look to see if you have a set of kind of generic best practices turned on. Uh, so that's nice. Um, so it'll go through and take a look at your system configuration, do a quick scan, and a lot of the features and things that it reports are around auditing. Uh, and it also stores reports historically. So this is a cool thing that you can go back and you can see if you're actually improving the security of your site over time. And that's a good thing to hand to, uh, I'll, I'll get you in one second. Uh, we do a lot of government work, Dan, Swart, and I. Uh, and often our clients require us to be delivering proof that we're securing their site. That's a really easy and handy tool. And yeah, did you have a question? No, that uh, the previous uh, module really does just around the Drupal configuration. What about um, okay? So what about like does that include like, PHP IMI stuff by chance? Uh, security review actually has more PHP INI scanning okay. built in. Yeah. So um, you yeah, well, actually let's talk about that now. So security <laughs> review. <laughs> Uh, can your system, and that, I use this, the term system, not Drupal, but system more broadly, uh, be evaluated for known best practices or even just giving you a quick audit of things that it might recommend, you know? Uh, so Security Review does this analysis um, against a lot of different security vectors, uh, and it will scan, you know, your PHP INI settings, uh, or it can, it has the ability to do so. Um, in 8, I think this module definitely could use a little bit more polish, I think it's coming around. I'm actually working on a patch to make a plugin system for this module so that anybody can extend it. Um, but it's not there yet, so I apologize. You know, day jobs. Um, but like the other uh, module, it also stores historical reports as well. So you can go back and see, oh, okay, on this date, I had these nine issues and now I only have six. That's kind of cool, I'm improving, right? Login history, so how do you actually track people and when they log in and how they're logging out and all this other thing? So um, this module is great um, and it extends more than just Drupal's core user X logged into the site, user Y logged out of the site, right? This provides IP address, the user agent. Um, it also tracks if people have tried to reset their password, which is an attack vector. <laughs> Yes. Um, is there is there an extension or a module that will actually track users' activity that you can just go back and like maybe click on the user and see what they've done after they've logged in? Um, so there's many different modules that do that, and there's even core features that do that. Uh, but it all depends on the specific action, and so like editing of all nodes and things like that uh, are already tracked out of the box and it tracks the user who did it. So you can filter that down on the, the default uh, page that you can go and audit. Um, I'm not sure if Drupal 8 has a tool yet to do um, like data analysis uh, of a log and we usually offload something like that to uh, you know a third party tool like 
uh, New Relic, or there's a couple other ones that are really good for doing log analysis um, or performance scanning and all that type of stuff. Um, I can give you more information on that. Sure. Okay. So authentication is the next area. Again, we're doing a clean sweep. We're good on time, too. Rock and rolling, even with our technical issues. So authentication deals with um, basically making it more challenging, and again, usability, I, I know, I know, I know, uh, making it a little bit harder for people to log in. And I know that that sounds like inherently not good, right? But it can be more secure. Uh, and there will definitely be, you know, some inconvenience. You'll hear a lot of griping. But I think the griping would actually be a little bit better than if someone compromises your site and steals the data and all that. Uh, I'm just speculating. I, I could be wrong. Um, but this is kind of like my impression of the users when they turn on some of these tools. Um, very perfect for, you know, being so close to the space launch thing down here, right? That, that's, I did a good job. Uh, so what are some ways that we can explore making our live, uh, users' lives a little bit more miserable? First and foremost, two-factor authentication, the TFA module. Uh, this was one of the Google Summer of Code projects I worked on. Uh, I know the module, ma the maintainer of the seven module, uh, Ben Jevens. He's amazing, major expert in security too. If you ever get to talk to him, pick his brain. That'll be time well spent. Uh, so TFA uh, basically adds a secondary step, uh, or as they say, second factor, uh, to make a user's login uh, in a different way. You know, so there's more than one thing that they need to do instead of just typing their user and password. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And the way that I uh, developed it with the student was we built a plugin system so that the second factor could be anything that you want. So uh, you can write a plugin that could be for a custom second factor in your systems. Uh, you can use ones that we built. We built um, the Google Authenticator module, that leverages the API in TFA to install a Google-based second factor for authenticating. It's token-driven. Uh, I think Google uses either text message or, you know, sends you a code, you type it in, reports back to Drupal, and everybody's happy. Uh, but because Drupal Core provided the plugin system functionality, I don't have to assume the features that TFA needs to support. It can support all of your features. Simple SAML PHP auth. This is a single sign-on kind of integration module. Uh, so how can you replace Drupal's login with single sign-on? This is one that you can use. Yes, sir? Uh, can everything that you're saying, can we assume that this is from, we are just speaking in context of Drupal 8, right? Yeah, you came in a little late. Uh, I, that was the, one of the things that I had said is every solution is ready to go in Drupal 8 today. Oh, your title of the presentation said that, but I just yeah. want to make sure. Cool. Yes, sir. So already these available for 7. Uh, so actually, most using the old most of them are available for 7, actually. Uh, you know, I think it would be less likely that they'll be polished in 8 than they'll be readily available and polished in 7. So, uh, but all these are, and there's plenty more that I could have put in here about Drupal 7 as well. But that is a very good question. So uh, to wrap up on this uh, simple SAML PHP, one of the beautiful things is this is an, another example where something like Composer comes in really handy because this is a third party tool. So we bring this into Drupal, make use of the library, we extend it, and Drupal does its thing. Yes? Sorry, uh, would simple SAML also work with LDAP? Yeah. It has a number of, it can work with LDAP, it can work with like uh, Oracle driven systems and Shibboleth and all kind. I mean, it's, it's a totally extensible library. It's a very well known standard. So you can go and um, look at your identity provider and see if it provides plugins that support SAML. And what about uh, multi site? Uh, it works with multi site. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I don't see any challenges there. Password policy. So this was the first Drupal 8 module that I developed probably now two and a half years ago. Um, 
How do you force your users to have strong passwords? How do you force them to reset their passwords after a given amount of time? Uh, password policy provides both, and we built another plugin system. You're seeing a trend here. That if you <laughs> want to restrict your users from entering certain types of passwords or have a, a mediation that is specific for your organization, you can extend that in a module, use the API that I've given in the module, and write your own logic. So if you want to make sure that your password doesn't say bananas, <laughs> that is totally possible now. All right. Password strength. Um, another external library. So there is a library called, oh, I always screw this up, XCVBN. And it is a tool, I think, that was sponsored or founded either by Google or Twitter. I can't remember some big corporation that kind of founded this idea. And Ben Jevons developed an open source PHP version of that. It's on GitHub. Guess what? We bring it in with Composer. Life is good. We now have a module that extends password policy using its APIs to bring in this library. And the great thing about this library is that it is the most trivial thing to configure. It is a scoring system. It takes a password and it derives its entropy based on how secure that password is. It's a score from one to five. So all you do whenever you're configuring this is you say, I want to check and make sure that my users have a score of at least a four. And the fives are really crazy passwords. I'm talking like 30 to 40 characters of insanity, right? So you probably want to start with a four. Cool. Encryption. This is near and dear to my heart. I do a lot of work on these modules. Uh, and we've done so many improvements in eight. I'll get to one that I'm like really proud of, sorry, uh, shortly. Um, but one thing when you're dealing with encryption, you have to evaluate both the communication channel and the data at rest. Those are the two main things that you need to make sure you're dealing with to, to do this right. There are many, many, many solutions that can be used and that exist in every tier of the application and infrastructure. So encryption can come in from a cloud provider. It can come in through your CDN and have an encrypted channel. And lots of lots and lots of stuff, okay? But let's look at some general tips. The lower that you implement anything that's encrypted, the stronger it is and the more it scales, okay? So if you get it in at your infrastructure and you take advantage of that, you don't need to worry about encrypting everything that's related to Drupal or everything that's coming from a CDN or anything to that effect. Your infrastructure will provide the data at rest if you're using something like Amazon, AWS, and other tools that has this out of the box. Uh, good reminder, I would just turn on HTTPS on your sites. I mean, just do it, you know, it's, um, and just leave it on for everything. I think some people still are of this mindset that like, oh, I should only do that for login forms or this thing or that thing or the admin area of Drupal, just turn it on. Users like seeing the lock in the corner. Makes them feel good. When we're already making their lives miserable in other ways. Just, just give them that. And uh, I already talked about this, but again, a lot of hosting providers do provide full disk encryption and that would include everything from your code, your databases, you know, your files, all of that. So let's talk about some Drupal solutions now. The key module, what's the problem? Well, I want to be able to have a standard way to maintain a set of system keys. They could be API keys, they could be secured passcodes, or anything along those lines. But they are like keys that can be used for you know, integrating with another system like uh, Google Analytics or anything along those lines. Uh, but this module is a generic tool that provides you the ability to manage keys. So uh, it handles all of the storing and retrieval, and it has an API that gives you the full ability to set up any type of custom key management solution that you ever could dream of. And it comes with a couple defaults. Yeah, I think this one needs that. 
encrypt. Um, so the general problem space for encrypt is I need a way to in, uh, encrypt all of Drupal's application data. That's what we're trying to solve. Encrypt itself provides just an API, a few common or you know readily accessible algorithms that are not hyper secure really. Uh, they are, but we have other contrib modules. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and it provides the general utility for performing encryption and decryption. The thing about this module that people do not quite understand is we are not performing any encryption with this module. This is a utility. This can work in any capacity to encrypt anything. So what are we providing that actually does some work? There are tons of modules now that are using encrypt-based technology now in Drupal 8. Uh, so if you want a, you know, different algorithms, we have a couple projects like Real AES and the Diffuse project. I think the two actually have been merged. We kind of uh, mcrypt and PHP 7 was deprecated. Uh, so now we're pulling a third-party library that has uh, the same types of algorithms. They're actually even better than what mcrypt was doing before. Yeah. Is it like Zodium? Yes. Yep. And so uh, also in terms of doing the actual encryption, we uh, have developed the field encrypt and file encrypt modules. I ported both of them. Uh, and the one thing I will say, uh, finally, and this you guys are going to be thrilled about, the file encrypt module has now been optimized. If you use a module like Real AES and the, the Libsodium tools, it now provides streaming. All of the data and the performance concerns that were you know, that were happening because of like the block-based transactions, you couldn't uh, easily encrypt large files. They would get stuck. You know, your, your server would have smoke pouring out of it, <laughs> right? Now, that's not the case. These new algorithms actually do support streaming, and guess what? So do the tools. And that was a fun rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> One specific use case that you might want to explore, this was a Google, the second Google Summer Code project that I worked on. It's called PubKey Encrypt. Is anybody familiar with OwnCloud? Does anyone know what that is? OK, OwnCloud provides its own uh, encryption model uh, for in, uh, encrypting system objects inside of OwnCloud. That implementation is now available to you in Drupal 8 via that module. Hurrah. Mm -hmm. DevOps. OK. If you want probably the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest opportunity for you to improve anything that's related to security, start with your DevOps process. Why? It's iterative. It happens frequently. It's smaller. You're not trying to solve a huge problem at the same time. Evolve your practices so that you can proactively be building security into the way that you work. It's huge. So what are some general tips? I hope you guys are doing most of this. Um, please, for the love of God, use code repositories. Have code reviews. There's fancy, fancy technology called pull requests in GitHub. Uh, use it, OK? It works. Uh, perform code review. Pay extra careful attention to when you're developing custom code. Review that even more. Be very, very uh, highly scrutinized for the custom code. Tag your releases so that you have good change management and release policies. If you tag your releases, you should be, have a way to be able to go and say what's in that release and describe it so that if you have to revert, <laughs> you'll be able to do that easily and know what changed in which release. And I would say release rapidly. Do small releases. Do it all the time. Release in very small and iterative chunks because you will thank me later. Because it breaks the problem, uh, the auditing, down into a smaller and more reviewable thing. Ah. So 
if you have smaller chunks, it's a lot easier to catch a security issue than if you're reviewing thousands of lines of code. Yes, yeah. That's an awesome question. I should put that in my slide deck. This is why we have uh, people like Kathy who are amazing to help me out. Or don't know things and are willing to ask them. <laughs> All right, so what are some, oh yes. Um, I think it does actually, uh, and I. Um, I'm thinking more specifically the company. Yeah, um, I think it does. I um, that's a good question. I might have a bit about it later. Um, let me get back to you. <laughs> In Drupal, things have changed a little bit, so it's yeah. Um, so some other general tips about DevOps. First and foremost, automation is always better than manual, right? The, these things can make mistakes. They are dangerous. I, you can just push a key the wrong way, and all of a sudden you're deploying the wrong release or you're doing something crazy. So the more that you're capable of automating, if you're using something like Jenkins and using Drush scripts and all these other things, do it. It's not going to hurt. Like, you know, it'll at least make your practices more consistent. It's going to be less variable, and, you know, again, it should be, uh, it, it should be part of your practice. And I swear I had the coder module in this. I, I'm glad I remembered. All right, so coder. I want to scan your code for best practices. I, I think it does have some security related things, but the main goal it's trying to solve really is just making sure that you are leveraging um, the coding standards and the things that it tries to adopt. I do think um, the uh, coding standards that ship with coder, there's two things. There's the, the standards, but there's also the best practices. And the best practices is where I think the security stuff may bubble in. Cool. But the really cool thing about the coder module is you can integrate this in with your CI system. So you could bolt this right into Jenkins and run a test to make sure that when you submit a pull request that your code is meeting these conventions. And I will make a bold statement here that even you may not directly believe or think that standards apply to security right but it does because the minute that you need to hire someone or get somebody else to look at your code if it's not done in a standard way you will drive them bonkers and you you will slow them down from actually solving your problem do it do it hacked hacked is another one of these kind of kind of uh, best practice type modules uh, it basically scans all of the code that you're running in your in your code base in your Drupal site and make sure that you didn't go in and tamper it. And what do I mean by tampering? Well, yes, you are allowed to use Drupal patches. That's acceptable. You are allowed to uh, go in and even override some of the code in another module. But you should not be dorking with core. And you should not be dorking with the contrib modules themselves. Unless if you're submitting a patch back. If you fix something, then bravo. So this hack module basically scans your code base to make sure that you are doing things the way you should be doing it. Um, again, good stuff. Backup and migrate. This one, um, so this one's more about sort of uh, rolling things back. You know, I said it's when your site gets compromised, not if, right? When you do that, you want to make sure you have a bunch of tools that are at the ready to be able to throw your site back up in the event that you know that it does go down. So backup and migrate helps out with this. Also has some Drush integration. Uh, and basically, you know, the, the main space is I want to back up or restore uh, the work, you know, a site at any given point in time. Uh, you can also tune this in uh, with you know like uh, cron and drush to basically run a backup every so often, you know, every day, every hour, I don't know, whatever level of security you need. Uh, and so this module performs that and basically helps you uh, in the event that you need to, you know, go back to a sane state. Hopefully not. All right, so um, this is not quite my area. Uh, environments, uh, we had a fun conversation about that last night, Susanna and I. We were, uh, but I will say that Dan and Swert and I work with some of the most brilliant people <laughs> that do 
cloud-based infrastructure work. I can't even tell you they're geniuses. And so a little bit of that, just like a smudge of it has rubbed off on us, uh, me specifically. These guys are smart. Um, so let's talk about a few things that at least I've learned, uh, even though I'm not a sysadmin. Point number one, securing your infrastructure is just as important as securing your Drupal system. They can come this way. They can come that way. They can come over here. It doesn't matter. They're coming. Okay? But the beautiful thing about handling things in the environment or in the infrastructure is that you can often mitigate attacks at the lowest level before Drupal ever gets involved. And that is a very, very powerful thing. So what are some ways that you can do that? First and foremost, this kind of goes more into the DevOps realm, but you should absolutely be using a multi-environment code workflow. You want to make sure that you are only pushing the highest fidelity work to a production system at any point in time, period. Use of a CDN can act as a web application firewall. So you could put something that's directly in front of your Drupal host, takes all of the requests, and is the, the you know, shield for your Drupal site. And your actual Drupal site and your host could be behind some protected access, whether that's a VPN that you know, the CDN has access to, but nobody else does. That's all managed through the infrastructure. There are modules like uh, the CDN module and other things that can be used to configure Drupal to respect them or, or change the behaviors a little bit. But again, this is like one of the low-hanging fruits that like, you know, you can intercept cross-site request forgeries, cross-site scripting attacks directly through the CDN web application firewall. So easy. Like, you know, yeah. Ah, Splunk. That was the tool I was actually thinking of earlier. I said New Relic, didn't I? Ah, bummer. Using Splunk or Elk to do log analysis. So Splunk, and uh, the open source equivalent of Elk, oh, okay, sorry, we got to wrap up, uh, basically gives you a tool for analyzing logs. And that gives you the ability to take all that gazillion amounts of data that you're collecting and sort through it and try to analyze if you're getting hacked. Uh, last tips here, use cloud-based environments. There are so many security-related tools that are open just for people who just use cloud. Like, it's incredible. Uh, and there's so many architectural advantages too. Have a failover environment if you do get hacked. Have something at the ready that you flip the switch and you're moving right back over. Uh, and then test your backup and failover plan. I love the people that are like, oh, I have that. Like, well, when's the last time you tested it? Oh, it's been about five or six years. Um, so some acknowledgments. I'll, I promise to keep this brief. I'm sorry for keeping all of you. Civic Actions, I have so much love for my company. Uh, they are such a special group of people. Uh, culture, everything, it's, it's just uh, brilliant. I'm, I'm one of the luckiest people I, yeah, ever. Uh, all of you, the Drupal community, you make these tools possible. You use them, you make them better. And I'm very grateful for that. I love all the participation of people that help out. Um, the Flor Florida Drupal Camp, organizers, presenters, participants, again, thank you so much. And I did note Peter Willannon because we had talked about uh, his talk that was at Drupal North. Uh, we are definitely standing on the shoulder of giants, folks. I'll take questions. Thank you.